one thing that makes trigonometric functions hard to deal with is that there are lots of hidden relationships between different trigonometric functions. Um, these, are, these relationships are called identities. We've had a brief look at identities bef before, but what we're going to do now is uh, dig a little deeper and see just how many hidden relationships there are. Um, so first let me explain what an identity really is. Uh, so an identity is something like sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. And this equals here, this isn't an equation where we're looking for certain values of theta to make this true. An identity um, is saying that this, this equals is true for all values of theta, right? In an equation, usually you're looking for just certain special values for the variable that make the equation true. But in an identity, you're saying that this equation is actually true no matter what value of theta that you choose. And actually, we should be a little more careful. It's not quite always all theta. For this particular identity, this identity is true for every single value of theta you could choose. Um, but in general, we'll just insist that uh, our identities be true for all values of theta where both sides of the identity are defined. So where both sides are defined. Okay, so for example, here's a, a quick identity that's only true some of the time. So cosine theta times tangent theta is equal to sine. Okay, now we'll see later that this is a genuine identity, but the left-hand side is not defined, uh, not defined for some values of theta. So any value of theta that makes this uh, tangent undefined, and we know what values of theta that is, that's uh, pi over two plus any multiple of pi. So whereas the right-hand side is defined for all values of theta. So um, this is an, ex an example of ident an identity that is an identity even though for certain values of theta, the left-hand side isn't defined. For every value of theta where both sides are defined, these two expressions are actually equal to each other. Okay, so the general idea of an identity is that it's some equation that's always, or at least most of the time, true. Um, and we've actually seen several examples of identities already. For example, um, some of the trig functions are directly related by identities. So for example, tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta. And similarly, for cotangent and secant and cosecant, there are identities. These are really, well, not quite defined tangent, cotangent, and so on, but they're, they follow directly from the definitions of tangent and cotangent, etc. But there are some other identities that we've seen. So there are the Pythagorean identities. Remember, there are three flavors of the Pythagorean identity. So there's sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. There's uh, tangent squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. And finally, uh, one plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta, okay? Um, but there are even more identities that we've seen. So all of the trig functions are periodic. And when you write down what that means, it gives you some identities that are true for the trig functions. So for example, uh, cosine of theta, we know that if you take the same angle theta and you add one period to it, and for cosine, the period is two pi, um, you actually get the same value for cosine. So that means these two things are equal, no matter what theta is. And that means this is an identity. 
um, another example of a period uh, an identity that really is talking about periodicity is the one for tangent so for tangent the period isn't 2 pi it's pi and so tangent theta is equal to tangent theta plus pi so this is also an identity we've actually been using these identities to evaluate um, the trig functions uh, by adding and subtracting multiples of the period until we get an angle that we recognize. Okay, there's one more general class of sort of basic trigonometric identity that maybe you've noticed already, although we haven't really explicitly written them down, and it has to do with symmetry. So let's start with cosine theta. Right, if you have some angle theta like this, and we're in a unit circle. If you're in a unit circle, cosine tells you the x-coordinate. But what if instead of theta, you thought about the angle minus theta? Well, minus theta is the same angle, but just going in the other direction. So let's compare cosine of theta and cosine of minus theta. Well, look, cosine is talking about x-coordinates, and both, both of these angles have the same x-coordinate, or produce the same x-coordinate in the unit circle. So these two values of cosine are actually the same. So if you have a minus sign inside of cosine, it's like not having the minus sign. We had a name for this kind of symmetry. This was called uh, even symmetric. So cosine happens to be an even symmetric function and symmetry really is an identity. There's a similar diagram we can draw for sine. Uh, so if we have some angle for sine, right, in a unit circle, sine tells you the y-coordinate of the point on the unit circle. So let's compare that, let's compare sine of theta to sine of minus theta. Well, minus theta is the same size but going the other direction. And if you compare these two x coordinates, the one for minus theta and the one for plus theta, I'm sorry, not x coordinates, sine is talking about y coordinates. If you compare these two y coordinates, they're the same size, they're just in opposite directions. And that means that these two values for sine are negatives of each other. So, you, you, so we just have this extra minus sign out here. So the difference between these two values of sine is that they're negatives. So throw a minus sign on there somewhere and you get an identity. We could have put the minus sign on the other side. So it would be the same to say that sine of theta is equal to minus sine of minus theta. Okay, this, is, this identity is so-called odd symmetry. Okay, so it turns out cosine is even and sine is odd. Um, also, if you look at the definition of secant, secant turn, also turns out to be even. And uh, tangent, cotangent, and cosecant all turn out to be odd symmetric. So we have seen some examples of uh, trigonometric identities already but we're going to see there are lots more examples of trigonometric identities.